Suppose we're given a potential energy function that describes a force in one dimension. Um, it might look like this. This is unusually complicated. I wanted to emphasize that what we're describing here is the potential energy as a function of x. And we're really talking about a force acting in one dimensions, but we had to use a two-dimensional graph in order to show the magnitude of the potential energy for each value of x. So I've already discovered the work done by a conservative force is the negative of the change of potential energy. Let me just move to calculus mode here and say a tiny increment of work done by a conservative force will be the negative of a tiny increment of potential energy change. And then I'm in one dimension, so finding this little incremental amount of work would mean that I'd take the dot product of f of x and dx for some small horizontal change x. And I don't even have to write this as a vector dot product um, because I'm using signs to take care of direction. So no cosine term in there. Okay, and then real quick, we've figured out that I could find the force as a function of position by taking the negative of the derivative of the potential energy function with respect to x. Just a quick example. A potential energy function that we know very well is spring potential energy. And if I differentiate that with respect to x, I would get a 2 coming down and canceling to 1 half. And I would just get kx, but I have a minus sign out in front. And you'll recognize that as Hooke's Law with the sign put in there to indicate direction, where if x is positive, the force is negative. In other words, it tries to restore the length of the spring back to where it started at x equals 0. OK. One other thing to address in this video is the concept of equilibrium. So an equilibrium point is a point where the force is equal to zero. Well, if the force is the derivative of the potential energy function with a minus sign, then I'm looking for where the slope of this is zero, and that happens at local maxima and minima. So there's an equilibrium, because the slope of the tangent line is zero. Here's another equilibrium. Here's another one, and here's another one. Okay, so equilibrium I'll just try to smash the I in there. Hopefully you can see it. Equilibrium means the force is zero and that the whatever particle we're talking about is going to stay put. And that means we're looking for where negative du dx or just du dx itself is equal to zero. And there's a little bit more to say about this. There's two types of equilibria that I've labeled in here. Let's look at this one first, um, the top of the tiny hill. If I look at a small displacement from equilibrium, so in real life, nothing would stay exactly at one point for very long. I want to agitate it a little bit and then try to predict what's going to happen. So I want to look over here. And to make it clear, again, there's these issues of dimensionality that are a little bit confusing. But my object is moving in a one-dimensional space. So I'm going to draw it down here on the x-axis. This vertical coordinate is just telling me the size of the potential energy as I displace from that spot. That's why I need two dimensions. Okay. Look at the tangent line there. du dx is negative, which means f is going to be positive. So a slight displacement from the top of that hill is going to result in a force that points to the right. So by the time my particle is over here, it's experiencing a force pointing away from that equilibrium point, And it's going to run off to some new location. If I look at it, my particle being a little to the left of the equilibrium point, well, I have a positive slope to my tangent line, which means du dx is positive and f is negative. 
So the force points again away from the equilibrium point. So if I'm at the top of a hill in a potential energy graph, that's called an unstable equilibrium because any slight agitation is going to cause the particle to take off. So unstable equilibrium. That would occur at a local maximum of the potential energy function. And you can probably guess what's going to happen next. Now I consider a particle located right here corresponding to a local minimum of the potential energy function. And if I look at a slight displacement from that, my potential energy graph has a positive slope. Plugging in a positive number for the, for the derivative of the potential energy function gives me a negative f. So f is going to be less than zero right there. So if I were to visualize the particle displaced to the right of the equilibrium point, the force is going to point back to the left. And similarly, if I go over here, just to the left of the equilibrium point, visualize my particle, the slope of the potential energy graph is negative. That makes the force positive. So my force is going to point back toward that equilibrium position. Okay, so this point is called the stable equilibrium point. A local min of the potential energy function. And what I have in that case is called the restoring force. Because every time I agitate to the right of the equilibrium, the force points to the left and gets me back to the equilibrium. If I agitate to the left, the force points to the right and gets me back to the equilibrium. And this leads to oscillations, and in fact, it's, it's exactly what I see with a Hooke's, law, uh, a Hooke's Law potential energy function. So just try to get like a decent parabola in here. 1 half kx squared is a parabola. Passing through the origin, pointing up. Guess what we have right there at x equals 0? That's a stable equilibrium point. And so any displacement to the right of that equilibrium point for my particle is going to give me a positive slope on the potential energy function, which gives me a negative force similar over on the other side, negative slope, positive force. And this is why a mass connected to a spring gives you oscillations.